Hi, I'm Emily. Nestled between land and sea, you will find a unique and valuable ecosystem that teems with life and provides a multitude of benefits to wildlife and us. Welcome to an exploration into the wonders of salt marsh. Let's find out why these habitats deserve our attention and protection. What is a salt marsh? A salt marsh is a coastal wetland area found in sheltered intertidal mudflats where ground is exposed between tides. It is characterised by a mix of salt tolerant plants such as sea purslane, common sea lavender and thrift which are specially adapted to thrive in fluctuating and salty, also known as saline, conditions. How is salt marsh formed? Salt marshes start life as mudflats. In areas of sheltered water like a harbour, the sediment held in the water settles out and builds up. The structure of salt marsh is created by the way that water moves. As waves dissipate their energy and deposit silt during high spring and storm tides, and the water then runs back off the marsh. The latter process creates branching creeks that drain the marsh from small meandering ditches to waist-deep, fast-flowing channels with slippery, muddy sides. When the accumulating mud rises above the water surface on average tides, halfway between spring and neap tides, these salt marsh plants can colonise. These capture more sediment and allow the marsh to keep building for as long as it will still be low enough to be flooded by the higher tides. As the mudflats build up, different types of plants can grow and live there creating a salt marsh habitat made of blocks of flat, low-growing vegetation with narrow channels between. The development of mudflats and salt marsh over time is known as succession. So why is this habitat so important? Salt marshes are important because of the range of services they provide. Ultimately, they're biodiversity hotspots. This means salt marshes are home to a remarkable variety of animals, plants and microorganisms. The Solent is one of two sites where significant amounts of cord grass, classed as nationally scarce and endangered, are found. It's hugely important for wading birds and wildfowl. Many waders, gulls and terns use salt marshes as breeding habitat and many migratory birds rely on it for stopover sites during their long journeys. Salt marsh creeks become sheltered nursery sites to keep juvenile fish species safe, including the commercially important sea bass. They provide a refuge for other valuable shellfish and other invertebrates. As well as being a vital habitat for thousands of waders and waterfowl, the role that salt marsh plays in defending our coast from erosion by waves is increasingly recognised. Salt marshes have a long tradition of low intensity grazing as a conservation method, which is important for maintaining their diversity. Realignment of sea defences can allow for expansion of this habitat. Images of storm surges, rising sea levels and flash floods and the devastation they wreak on people and their homes are becoming all too common. Due to the melting of the Arctic sea ice and thermal expansion of the oceans as a result of global warming, sea levels have begun to rise. As with all coastlines, this rise in water levels is predicted to negatively affect salt marshes by flooding and eroding them. This has a knock-on effect to our nesting and roosting seabirds with their habitats disappearing. Salt marsh acts as a buffer zone, stabilising shorelines and protecting coastal areas, inland habitats and human communities from floods and storm surges. The salt marsh also breaks up the wave action, acting as a barrier. When flooding does occur, our salt marshes act like a huge sponge soaking up the excess water. Worldwide, these ecosystems are in danger of disappearing if they cannot increase elevation at rates that match sea level rise. Salt marshes also act as nature's filters by trapping sediments, pollutants and excess nutrients from the water. As the water passes through the marsh, the plants and microorganisms break down and absorb these contaminants, improving water quality before it reaches the ocean. Salt marshes can be very efficient at locking away carbon. When salt marsh plants die, rather than composing and releasing their carbon into the atmosphere, they become buried in the mud. As sea levels rise, more sediment layers get buried and more carbon gets locked underneath the mud. The rate of carbon sequestration on coastal wetlands is greater than all forests combined despite forests covering much larger areas. As trees grow, they absorb carbon from the atmosphere. 
and this carbon remains in the tree if it lives. When these trees die, they decompose and release the carbon back into the atmosphere. What happens in wetlands is different and means that carbon can be stored for hundreds of years. Wetlands are special because they bury the carbon from decomposing plants before it can be released back into the atmosphere. Salt marsh has two main characteristics that allow them to act as efficient carbon sinks. They have a high vegetation growth rate with European salt marsh soils sequestering an average of 2.1 tonnes per hectare per year. Secondly, they do not emit methane, an important greenhouse gas, since the sulphide present in the soil inhibits bacterial-driven methane production. The water levels and the occurrence of anaerobic decomposers in tidal marsh ecosystems also acts to reduce organic matter decomposition and promote carbon storage. Salt marshes are very important in sequestering carbon and do so at a rate higher than land ecosystems. The salt marshes of the Solent therefore are very important in storing carbon. Finally, salt marshes offer incredible opportunities for outdoor activities, such as bird watching, hiking and kayaking. Unfortunately, salt marsh is disappearing at an alarming rate. The Solent salt marsh has been heavily degraded over the years with over half the salt marsh of the Solent having been lost since the 1860s due to a range of threats, particularly those from human activities. For example, coastal squeeze. To fight sea level rise, salt marsh would naturally progress landwards, but increased urbanisation and development means that it gets squeezed between the sea and these landward structures. This leads to habitat loss and fragmentation. Erosion and deposition, these can both change the structure of the habitat and can be caused by a number of activities, including dredging, wash from commercial and recreational boats, increasing wave activity, and an increase in sediment input from rivers. Pollution is another issue with runoff from agricultural activities, industry, and urban areas introducing pollutants and excess nutrients to the water, causing water quality issues and negatively impacting salt marsh health. A big threat to salt marsh health is invasive species. Non-native plant and animal species can displace native salt marsh species, reducing biodiversity and altering the ecosystem dynamics. For example, the smooth cordgrass species hybridizes with the native small cordgrass species, creating a common cordgrass which takes over and does not create a complex environment to support wildlife. This is often thought to be a threat to birds feeding on the mudflats. Recreational pressure is causing habitat loss and disturbance, such as people leaving designated paths and trampling the habitat. This is also likely to disturb the birds nesting or feeding there. Activities like wildfiling and dog walking can cause additional pressure for the same reasons. Therefore, it is important these activities are carried out conscientiously and salt marsh is well managed. The Solent Seascape Project aims to restore eight hectares of salt marsh. Chichester Harbour has seen a particular loss with 58.8% since 1946, with 14.5% of the salt marsh being lost since designation as a site of scientific interest in 1970. It estimates that on average 2.5 hectares of salt marsh, the equivalent of more than three football pitch areas, is still being lost every year across Chichester Harbour which is why it is essential we act now to encourage its return. At Itchner Harbour, the SSP is repurposing dredge sediment, which would otherwise be dumped in the English Channel, taking 2,500 cubic metres of material dredged from the Channel approach to Chichester Marina to rebuild the shoreline where salt marsh has been lost. This pioneering trial has raised the height of the area to enable pioneering salt marsh species, such as cold grass and glass wall, to recolonize the sediment, stabilize it, and allowing other salt marsh species to follow suit. We can't restore salt marsh without your help. So ask yourself this, can I help? Can you spread awareness of the benefits and pressures of salt marsh? Can you talk to others about what you've learnt or even post it on social media? Can you deepen your own knowledge and understanding of the issues our marine world faces? Volunteering is a great way to connect with people and these amazing habitats. Can you be adventurous and take on something more hands-on? If you're a water user, ask yourself these questions. 
Can I move my vessel slower when near salt marsh? Can I enter the water with my equipment where there isn't salt marsh present? Can I take precautions against invasive species being translocated by my vessel? If you enjoy walking along the coast, can you stay on the designated paths? Everything that happens on land affects our oceans, so keep that in mind when making certain choices. Can you use more environmentally friendly products? Can you reduce your waste or dispose of it better? You've already taken the first step by watching this video. Thank you. What's your next step?